This video was brought to you by the lovely people at my Patreon. 2020 is over and I think I speak for all of us when I say thank God. Amongst other things, 2020 was a significant year for climate change, but in the new year, 2021, we have some very exciting big developments to look forward to. So I just want to spend a couple of minutes talking about five things you should be on the lookout for in climate change coverage in 2021. Firstly, Chinese climate policy. China currently emits about 30% of the world's greenhouse gases. It's the world's largest emitter. And so what it chooses to do in the field of climate action is massively significant. And last year, Xi Jinping dropped an absolutely huge bomb. The Chinese premier announced that the nation would peak its carbon emissions by 2030 and be carbon neutral by 2060, although exactly what he meant by that is a little unclear. To use technical terminology, this would be a pretty bloody big deal, especially as China has met its historical climate commitments. Although those climate commitments were much smaller than this enormous pledge. The thing to look out for in 2021 is China announcing how it plans to do this, because obviously we're living through a post-COVID recovery, and China's recovery has largely been based on high carbon energy and infrastructure, which is for the record exactly what I said it would be in a previous video. Excellent analysis by Carbon Brief indicates that China has committed to investing three times as much money in new fossil fuel based projects as it has to investing in green energy projects. So I would guess that this year, possibly at the COP conference, which we'll come to later in the video, it would make a raft of new investment announcements and perhaps specifically in energy infrastructure, so allowing for a greater integration of renewable energy into its grid. Keep an eye out for a quite probably very public announcement like that from China, because if it happens, that's a huge step forward in lowering global greenhouse gas emissions. Of course, China is not the only superpower going into 2021. We also have a new administration in America. To say that Donald Trump's presidency was bad news for the environment would be an understatement. However, in 2021, we can look forward to the presidency of Joe Biden because he won the election. President-elect Biden has laid out some fantastically ambitious plans for climate action, having been influenced by people on the left of the Democratic Party. Amongst other things, Biden has announced that he will be rejoining America into the Paris Agreement on his first day in office, pledges to make America carbon neutral by 2050, and has laid out a truly ambitious $2 trillion investment strategy for greenifying the American economy. However, he might struggle to accomplish this. This is because at the moment, Biden can only really influence such things via executive orders, which are limited in scope and can be undone by the next president, whoever that may be. To effect further changes, Biden's Democratic Party would have to take control of the US Senate, which is currently controlled by the Republicans. And considering their environmental credentials are roughly on par with those of Cyril Sneer, that means they're almost certainly going to block his $2 trillion investment plan. This is why the next piece of climate news to watch out for is the Georgia Senate runoff race this January. If the Democrats can take the two seats up for grabs there, then they can effectively take control of the Senate on issues related to tax and spending, and so Biden could realistically push through his plan. If a Republican wins, that's going to be a lot more difficult. So this is a really crucial moment for climate action. The next thing to watch out for is arguably the headline event of the year, COP26 taking place in Glasgow this November. COP stands for Conference of Parties. It's basically the United Nations Annual Climate Change Conference. It was meant to happen in Glasgow in 2020, but because of the pandemic, it got delayed a year, which may have been an absolutely crucial delay and good news. These COP events happen every year, and in 2019, there was meant to be a discussion of nations agreeing to further carbon emission cuts and effectively strengthening up the promises they made in the Paris Agreement. Those decisions, however, were kicked down the road to COP26 in 2020, largely thanks to the action of a couple of nations. If the conference had taken place in 2020, then those same nations quite possibly would have actually had the same objections. But in 2021, America is under new administration. The Biden administration is very keen to, apparently, commit to further climate action. And China's Xi Jinping is much the same story, he's committed to making China's emissions peak before 2030. So those are two very significant nations who have been moved from one side of the argument to the other, those advocating for emissions cuts. So it is possible that COP26 could see some real fireworks in terms of commitments to future carbon cuts. Now, admittedly, we shouldn't get too excited because previous conference of parties have not exactly been the most effective 
And also nations are feeling the financial pinch of a post-COVID recovery, so they might be reluctant to commit to green spending at this point in time. But there is a chance that we could see some really significant pledges made in November this year. Next, 2020 was kicked off by some exceptional wildfires in Australia, an event which was almost certainly exacerbated by climate change. Now, it's unlikely that we'll see similar fires in Australia this year, the conditions aren't exactly right, but another place that we should be on the lookout for some exceptional weather this year is the southwestern United States. Climate change combined with La Nina conditions in the Pacific Ocean have led to the southwestern United States being warmer and drier than average, and we expect those conditions to continue continue across the spring of 2021. The US government has put out a warning saying that the wildfire season this spring could be particularly bad in the southwest United States. So whilst we're not seeing the same kind of events as we saw in Australia, and it hopefully won't be quite that dramatic, I would keep an eye on the news of wildfires in America this year. Not just in spring, but also in summer. We can expect the intensity and frequency of events like these to both increase as we continue to warm the planet. So this kind of phenomenon would certainly match what climate science was telling us to expect. If you do live somewhere where there is a wildfire season, please do stay safe. And then lastly, is 2021 going to be a record-breaking year for global temperatures? Probably not. As I just mentioned, the Pacific Ocean is currently in its La Nina phase, which basically means the ocean is slightly cooler than usual. And that doesn't sound like very much of a big deal, but whether the Pacific is in El Nino or La Nina conditions is a large part of what determines the global average temperature anomaly. 2020 was on track to be the warmest year on record, but at the tail end of the year, these La Nina conditions developed, which just slightly lowered the global average temperature. And that was enough to just knock it below 2016, which is the current record holder. However, that's kind of extraordinary because in 2016 we saw a huge super El Nino event which warmed up the Pacific massively and it effectively warmed the entire planet. And what's happened in the four years since then is humanity has warmed the planet enough that the largest internal driver of changes to the Earth's surface temperature was swinging so hard in one direction in 2016 and relatively hard in the other direction in 2020, and we basically just negated that. Like, humans in the course of four years have effectively changed the climate as much as the biggest possible swing from El Nino could. And that's terrifying. As we're going into 2021 with La Nina conditions, it's unlikely that we would eclipse 2016's level of warming unless a large El Nino event were to develop in the tail end of the year, which is possible. But then again, maybe humans have influenced the climate enough in just the past 12 months to elevate us beyond the record set in 2016. We don't know. We're kind of in uncharted territory. So if the fifth thing to look out for in 2021 isn't the global average temperature change, which, I mean, I, I'd argue really you should be looking at it anyway, it's somewhat the point, then the number to look out for is this number. This is the total amount of carbon we have added to the atmosphere to date. If this number gets above one trillion, that's really the kind of climate change we want to try and avoid. So I'm going to put a link to this website down there, trillion ton, in the description. And just check in every now and again over the course of the year. Keep an eye on it. Because what is this number going to be by the end of the year? I don't know. How low can we make it? Let's try and make it as low as possible. Thank you very much for watching this video. It was a little different for me. I wanted to put together a little something that was kind of, I don't know, almost like climate news. Do let me know if you enjoyed it and do let me know if you think I missed anything significant down there in the comments. There's so much stuff to talk about, I just wanted to limit it to five, so I'm sure there's going to be plenty of interesting discussion. Thank you also to the wonderful people over on my Patreon who support me and this channel. Your support means that I have a guaranteed amount of income every month, I can pay bills and I can actually focus on making the best videos I can which is the most wonderful thing you could give a creator. So to all my Patreons, thank you so much. Here's some suggested viewing for you next. If you enjoyed the video, do please pop it a like and share it with other people if you think they should see it too. And well, that just leaves me to say thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.